ants are complex. They move around seemingly random, and yet it's an organized group living together, having one goal in their life, growing the colony. Within a day of a worker hatching, it's all about getting into the working spirit. When she hatches, she knows what she must do, take care of her sisters. Today, we're taking a deep look inside this ant colony to discover the underground miracle of ants. Outside scavengers are out seeking for food. Ants mainly need two things in their life, protein and carbohydrates, also known as sugar. She's looking around, smelling with her sensitive antennae. These antennae need to be cleaned often to give her the best smelling opportunity. She does this by firstly taking one of her front legs against her mouth, soaking it with her saliva then rubbing it against her antennae, cleaning them. She has to do this every few minutes to make sure that she doesn't miss anything. As most ant colonies communicate via pheromones, it's vital for the colony that all workers keep their antennae clean. Therefore, it's not at all rare to see workers clean themselves. As she's walking around, she's looking for a few things. First and mostly, food. A dying caucus will always leave a scent of death behind. If she picks up anything, she'll be the first to respond. And yet, it doesn't look like luck is in her favor tonight. She keeps scavenging the area. Maybe another worker has found something? She keeps going around seeing if she picks up any pheromones, but no, it seems oddly quiet tonight and she heads back towards the nest. As she enters the nest, she's greeted by a few fellow workers. They carefully check out each other to make sure they are both from the same colony. Once more, this is happening through a scent a worker ant naturally produces once she is born. And even before this, when the workers are in their larvae stage, they send out a scent saying that they are hungry. They get their unique scent from the queen, who creates it after her nuptial flight. Nuptial flight is when the queen mates with a male ant to be fertilized. At this point, she has wings and is able to fly up and mate. After she's mated, she drops off her wings, and today you can only see a few scars of where the wings once were. Back with our workers, she's allowed into the colony, once more providing that ants are more than just random animals running around. Inside the colony, it's quite crowded. As ants feel more safe being close to each other, ants often choose the smaller space where they're able to be compacted together opposite larger spaces. Some ant species can actually be quite picky about their nest space, either seeking really dry environments or really humid environments. All these factors are considered by the ants all the time. Should a nest be doomed unsuitable for the colony, a team of worker ants will seek out for better areas and often end up relocating entire ant colonies. However, this is no simple task. Sending a queen or brood outside the nest can be a great risk for the colony. Therefore, a colony may settle down for less than optimal to be on the safe side. This can, however, end up killing colonies if they wait too long. Looking around the inside of the colony, we see quite a lot of workers and quite a lot of brood. The ant species we are looking at are often gone under the nickname carpenter ants or sugar ants, but officially these ants are known as Campanotus nicobarensis. Now, 
Camper Notice Sneaker Renters have quite a few special standout features. You may already have seen the different sized worker cast within the colony. These larger workers are known as replates. They have two standout features. Firstly, they have big mandibles, making them able to cut through the tough exoskeletons of insects. Secondly, they have a large social stomach, making them able to store lots of valuable goods within. This is, however, mostly important in times of low food amounts. But who requires the goods? Well, as I mentioned earlier, the workers go out seeking carbohydrates. They do this as this is their energy source. Without it, the workers will slowly get tired and the colony will slow down dramatically. Therefore, the lookout for carbohydrates is a constant thing that happens in an ant colony. But something that is even more important to find is protein. Protein is the single most important food source as this makes the entire colony grow larger and without protein, the colony will simply die off with time. The queen needs protein to keep producing eggs. This specific Campanotus nicoparensis queen lays between 5 and 20 eggs. Then she takes a break and depending on how much protein and energy she has, she repeats this cycle after a week or maybe a couple of weeks. As the colony grow, she will quicken the process and produce even more eggs. Some ant species can have even more than one queen, making the colony grow even larger. In our case, she's just one single egg-laying machine. When she lays the eggs, they will come out super tiny and really sticky. The reason behind this is they stick together, making it much easier for the colony to move the eggs around to the best position. It's a constant fight to clean the eggs, as they can very easily mold and die. Therefore, ants clean every single egg all the time, covering them in their protective saliva, moving the eggs away from anything that may make the process harder. But it is hard. The eggs need a high humidity to stay fresh and not dry out. It's a hard task for all ant species. Some ant species live in dry wood nest where the eggs are constantly on the verge to dry out, and other ant colonies live in the most humid areas where mold may lay just around the corner. As the eggs grow, they hatch into tiny larvae. These small larvae need a high amount of protein to grow into the ant they are meant to be. And it's quite simple. If the colony doesn't find enough protein for all the hungry larvae, they will simply have to kill the young larvae and feed them to the bigger larvae. You see, this is why protein is so important. Without it, the colony simply won't grow. The queen will lay less eggs and the larvae won't develop and with time simply die off. Therefore, the colony sends out a new scavenging team. They once more forage around looking at every corner, turning every rock to see if there's any food. The colony has now been without food for a long time and has sent out an entire team just to stand guard, ready to explore if needed. And it looks like luck may just be on their side. A dead roach has seemingly fallen down out of nowhere. The workers rush towards this new and exciting scent, but it's dangerous. Being so small, they must be careful. Such large prey can still be very deadly. So the workers carefully checks out the big roach. Some of the workers are too hungry and bites on it straight away, but it looks like luck may be on their side. This gigantic roach seems to be completely dead, only having the old nerves moving the body. It's official, there will be a feast tonight. The ants know it's now or never to collect as much food as possible. Once 
Once a worker has filled up her soldier's stomach, she heads back to the nest, laying down a pheromone trail, letting nearby workers know that this way there's food. This way, every time a worker runs back from the roach, they will lay down an even stronger pheromone trail. Some of you may have been a little bit confused when I said social stomach earlier. Once the ants are finding food, they don't eat it themselves. Ants have two stomachs, their own and a social stomach. Their own stomach is usually where they have the carbohydrate supply. But as they don't need protein, they fill up their social stomach and runs back to the nest. Once the ants return to the nest, they simply empty their social stomach to the ants that are still left behind. They do this using a unique technique called Traveloxus, where they transfer food from one social stomach to another. This way, workers can be left behind and still get the food. And by sending out the old generation of workers, they also make sure that if anything were to happen once they were out feeding, it would be the old generation that would suffer and not the newborns. This way, the ants have another safety protocol to make sure the colony is suited best for what things that may get thrown at them. As time goes by, the ant slowly empties the big roach and the food within stops. The ants will now no longer lay down a food pheromone and the trail will slowly stop. Inside the colony there is a feast. Now that there is enough food to feed all the hungry larvae, it's now officially feeding time. The process of feeding the larvae quickens as the colony distributes the protein all around the workers. This way, many ants can feed and nurse the hungry larvae. The larvae have many similarities to their former egg stage. They need a high humidity and they need to be constantly clean to make sure no mold get them. And now they also need a high protein diet. If everything goes well, the larvae hatches into pupae. In this final stage, the larvae is now ant size, and they are now forming into the ant they are meant to be. The workers also move the pupae to a hot and dry environment and simply leave them. Of course, they still need to be protected, but at this stage, they don't need food or anything. A couple of weeks later, the pupae is finished evolving and now encloses as a worker ant. As they enclose, the exoskeleton hasn't yet hardened and at this time they are very vulnerable to foreign danger. Therefore, they mainly just walk around inside the colony, getting fit, but not yet doing anything. For some species it's a matter of hours, and other species it's a matter of days. But with time, the ants change their color as the exoskeleton hardens, and they will join the forces within the colony, now taking the job of cleaning the eggs and the larvae and help maintaining the brood in general. And if there's any new meals outside, they will be ready to get the food and feed it on towards the next generation of larvae. With time, they grow older and they will also go outside to forage for new food. And then the cycle simply continues. Thank you for reaching it to the end of this little mini-documentary. This has been the story of the underground miracle of ants. 
This is the full size setup. It's really not that big. So yeah, I really enjoyed making this little mini documentary. And if you enjoyed this as well, it would mean the world if you would drop a subscribe and a like for me. But else, that has been it for this little mini documentary. Now, I would like to say a massive thank you to Ants Netherlands over on Instagram. I think he's Ants Netherlands 18 at the moment for fact checking some of my questions. He's a very clever guy, and it's always nice for a little fact checking. So, thank you to Ants Netherlands. Also, thanks to the members, which I shouted up early, early in the video. But yeah, that has been it for this video. So, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you all in another video. Bye!